Land out. The glass stone's ending definitely caught us off guard, but the process to capture the way it surprised Gion, Sebyok, and Sangwoo was an extensive one. Filming, the actors only had a small amount of glass explode near them. The slow motion feeling really comes through in how the actors perform. After capturing shots of the trio, each got to do their close-up work with singles as well. It may be a short moment, but plenty of hours were put into capturing every nuance and angle. When time came for the big visual of the glass stepping stones we see exploding, the team didn't resort to CGI for the shards of glass, except for the ones that appeared to harm the players and fly towards the camera. They actually went ahead and created the whole sequence in studio. These practical effects look unreal on the set. It's no surprise it translates to such a powerful and stunning visual in the episode. Hello players, let me welcome you all to the fifth game. The cast of Squid Game dove right in when playing Glass Stepping Stones and definitely didn't have it easy since, for many, it was actually terrifying to film. While CGI came into play in terms of establishing the setting and just how high in the air the players were, much of the carnival-like set was fully built. Even the glass. Fortunately, no one actually went through shattering glass, instead landing on a board supported by a crew to allow the actor to fall safely. In the show, the set that Red Light, Green Light takes place on already seems awfully crowded with the nearly 500 players, but on the set, there were even more folks, making it a pretty chaotic yet well-organized space. We would have thought CGI was used to add the bodies of those who lost during the game, especially the piles of people at the doors, but the actors all actually stayed wherever they were when they lost the game which couldn't have been very comfortable. When it came to filming close-ups, multiple cameras were used to capture the performances, and the filming crew was often running along with the players. The added detail of using a red marker to signal when a person took a shot is evident of just how thorough and meticulous the team was. No one could get away with cheating during the game either. If one person moved out of time, we're looking at you, Sangwoo. Then everyone had to start over. Today's game is Tug of War. The performers did not have it easy playing the often physically demanding games when filming the series since they really were going through the struggle depicted on screen. The sweat, effort, and even chained handcuffs securing them to the rope were real. There definitely couldn't be much movement between takes since everyone was literally tied up together. With a scene like this, there isn't really any other way to do it than at 100%. Move up or you die! Maybe one of the most terrifying, gasp-worthy moments in the show is seeing Gion hanging between safety and the end of the game for his whole team. The tension is real, even though the platform they were on was just a meter and a half off the ground. While swinging on a rope is usually pretty fun, this collective rope swing down tells a very different story and shows just how far the actors and production went to bring the best footage to the screen. My god, I can't believe how cool that was! The moment after the most intense tug of war we've ever seen is so still, but we can see just how exhausted each and every actor is, having just struggled and fought for their lives, literally. This shot is definitely needed as a moment of pause after the insane game just played, resulting in so many lives lost. This is also a bit of a moment of reckoning. This was hard, but whatever was coming next would only be harder, and they knew it. You know what? I really thought we were going to die out there. For the final face-off, the soundstage was a lot emptier with just Gion and Sangwoo competing. But there were many camera people, often filming using handheld video cameras to capture all the frantic action. Not only that, their crew made it rain, making the whole scene just as dramatic as the gruesome fight we see in the final cut. As filming went on, the two actors only got more disheveled, with rain soaking through and blood effects added throughout the battle. In order to get all the footage they needed, the actors had to be on point at every moment. I won't let you leave here with that money. The honeycomb scenes looked pretty similar on set as they did in the show. With the exception of the childlike drawn wallpaper, the rest of the set was filled with giant playground equipment and the smell of freshly made dalgona, the Korean honeycomb suite. 
Luckily, the actors didn't have to listen to the actual loud noise each time a bullet was fired. As someone on set was in charge of giving a shout to indicate the moment instead, so the performers had a solid, unified cue to react to. <laughs> Behind the scenes, we get a glimpse of just how hands-on the director was when it came time to shoot. Surprisingly, the cavernous, cool space where we see the confrontation between the police officer and a team member of the Squid Game is real. The opening on the top of the cave and the murky pool made the ideal setting. No doubt the actors felt totally immersed in the story. Shooting these scenes were pretty simple. All they needed were a couple of cameras, the right costumes, and the actors' chilling performances. Do you want to die? The glimpses we get of the players' lives before the game offer such a colorful backstory, especially when we see them with their families. Each of these scenes were shot quite intimately and simply, focusing on the narrative and what these relationships meant to the player, which translated to the screen beautifully. It's also one of the only times we get to see a typical everyday aesthetic, making the stark contrast between the real world and the Squid Game world even more apparent. So which color do you want to play as? How could we forget the original Squid Game? Filming this scene may have been one of the simplest setups, using an existing playground space. It only adds to the realism of the show and offers a great reminder of where the players started, as innocent children playing games for fun instead of their lives. At that moment, I felt as if I owned the entire world. Hanging out in the dorms between games certainly wasn't any less stressful than the games themselves. The bare bones set with the cool industrial edge does the trick, and the feeling of the daunting space comes through the screen. What we saw in the show was almost exactly what was happening on set, with all the added cameras and crew people, of course. We can't fall asleep tonight, okay? Who knows what someone else may try. Many moments in the Marbles game bring intense connection and emotion. The way they shot these scenes was a pretty stark difference from so many of the large and intense games. The fact that the actors were in a small space together with just a few crew members around really helps the intimacy come through and offers us the chance to get up close and personal with these characters and the short but meaningful relationship they have playing Marbles. We'll go around this whole town and take all the marbles, okay? <laughs> One of the reasons the Marbles game is so effective is because of just how well the setting transports us to the alleys of a small village. It makes sense that this is the set the team spent the most time building. Every detail, down to the stunning backdrops, moves us. It's no surprise they got the performances they did. The authenticity of this world is remarkable. My wife and I have this one here.